Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Mushroom Wonderland. My name is Aaron Hilliard, I'm your host. I'm a mycology educator from the Kitsap Peninsula of Washington State. And on this episode, we're gonna be talking all about chanterelles. Everybody's crazy about chanterelles, so let's learn all about them, what they look like, where to find them, how to cook them, on this episode of Mushroom Wonderland. Mushroom Wonderland. Chanterelles are arguably the most popular wild edible mushroom that people go out into the woods and forage. Uh, number one, because it's delicious. Number two, because it's pretty common. And number three, because it is easy to identify. So on this video, I'm gonna give you a quick look at what chanterelles look like in the wild so you can get out there and start foraging for yourself. They all grow in conifer forests. So they're what we call ectomycorrhizal mushrooms and they grow in association with conifer trees here in the Pacific Northwest. East of the Rockies, often they're growing with oak and other hardwood species. The main types of trees here in the Pacific Northwest that chanterelles like to grow with is gonna be the Douglas fir tree, the western hemlock tree, and spruce trees. When you find a large stand of these trees and they're pretty mature, around 30 to 40 years old, that's when you're gonna start to be able to find chanterelle mushrooms. They also like to grow in areas that are very mossy, and wherever the ground is covered in moss under these big trees, it's usually because not a lot of sunlight getting in, not a ton of wind, and a lot of moisture likes to stay in these areas. Chanterelles are pretty common in the middle of the summer in Washington State, it's pretty dry, and one of the only mushrooms that you can find growing are gonna be chanterelles. When you're walking through one of these forests that have these large evergreen trees and moss on the floor, there's a few plants that you're probably gonna notice in an area where chanterelles will be growing, and that's gonna be your salal bush, Gaultheria shalone. This one is used in floral arrangements and it's commonly picked here in the Pacific Northwest. Wherever I find a chanterelle, there is always some salal within eye shot. Also Oregon grape, that one's got them prickly leaves that'll scratch your legs if you're wearing shorts. These are often growing in the same kind of habitat that chanterelle mushrooms are gonna be growing in. Also huckleberries, we have an evergreen black huckleberry and we have a red huckleberry that grow here in lowland western Washington and usually I see these growing around chanterelles. When I find myself in that kind of forest, that's when I'm gonna start looking closely and I'm gonna slow down and I'm gonna scan left to right as I walk and I'm gonna look for that little flash of orange. And when you see it, it's often poking out of the moss a little bit. It's always coming straight out of the ground. Chanterelles are not gonna be growing off of a log or a stump. So when I see that flash of orange, that's usually gonna be what I call a flag. And that is a large mushroom. And when I find a flag, that's when I really will start to slow down and look around, scanning the ground for more flashes of that orange. And these chanterelles like to hide underneath the moss and behind leaves, so they're pretty tricky that way. These mushrooms only fruit in summer through winter here in the Pacific Northwest. You're not gonna find them in spring and early summer or the very dead of winter. They typically are gone after the first frost. And they can persist all the way through November and into December. I've even picked chanterelles in January on a mild year. And just because we had the first rain of the autumn season doesn't mean the chanterelles are gonna be up the next day. It usually takes a couple of weeks for the ground to get saturated enough and then the chanterelles will start to finally grow. So when you pick one of these mushrooms out of the moss or the duff, flip that mushroom over and have a look at the gills. And so these are gonna be ridges running down the base of the mushroom towards the stem or what we call the stipe in fungal language. And on a chanterelle, the gills are always what we call decurrent. And that means that it's running down the stipe in an irregular pattern and they sort of fade out on their way to the very base of the mushroom. Another way that chanterelles were described to me when I was brand new is that they're kind of vase shaped. You can either pluck or cut the chanterelle, but I like to cut them just to simply keep the dirt out of my basket. These mushrooms bruise pretty easy, so I like to carry a basket or a bucket with me. You can carry a mesh bag and put the mushrooms into that, but they get beat up pretty quick. The golden chanterelles we get here in the Pacific Northwest have something in them that the insects just don't like. So usually they're in great shape, they can grow for a long time, and they also have a really good shelf life. They stay in a paper bag in the refrigerator for a couple of weeks. 
So once you've picked these mushrooms and you're pretty sure that they're chanterelles, you should compare them to pictures on the internet, get yourself a good foraging guide, a good mushroom identification book, and compare them to the pictures in there. So we're gonna go quickly over a list of potential lookalikes of chanterelles. So the one that is most commonly referred to as the false chanterelle is called the Hygrophoropsis arantiaca. And this mushroom has decurrent gills, it is orange colored, and it is funnel shaped. Although it is much smaller in stature, the base of the stipe is gonna be thinner, and they're just typically a lot smaller of mushrooms. They have very bright orange gills, and the gills are quite a bit more pronounced. These mushrooms will grow in small troops and often grow on well-decayed wood. The Hygrophoropsis arantiaca, or the false chanterelle, is non-toxic, so it's not gonna hurt you if you eat it. One thing that you can do to ensure if it's a real chanterelle is tear it apart with your hand and if it tears apart and shreds kind of like string cheese or cooked chicken you can be pretty sure that that's a chanterelle the false chanterelle or the hygrophoropsis is not going to have this feature it's kind of going to flake and break apart where the real chanterelle is going to shred apart another potential look-alike is called the woolly or the scaly vase chanterelle turbinellus flocosus this one also has earned the common name as the bed chanterelle because it can cause really bad GI upset. Although in other parts of the world they do eat these and you can find them in markets in South America and in Asia, um, it is not recommended that you eat them. The ones we have here might be a different species and a high percentage of people end up having GI upset from eating these. These mushrooms are very much vase shaped but they do have these very obvious scales growing on the top of the cap. This is one of the real potential lookalikes in this area. The woolly or the scaly chanterelle could potentially be a lookalike and could give you an upset stomach. That brings me to a good point. Make sure to cook your chanterelles thoroughly, uh, just like any wild mushroom is a must. Uh, mushrooms have something called chitin, which our system really can't break down very well. Um, so the cooking process will help to break down that chitin and make that mushroom nutritionally available to your system. And also there are a lot of toxins within a lot of wild mushrooms that easily break down with cooking. So it is not recommended that you eat wild mushrooms raw. Go ahead and cook them for at least 10 minutes. Most people can eat chanterelles with no problem, but for the first time, I would suggest just eating a few spoonfuls and see how they do for you. Um, some people get GI upset no matter how you cook them. I'm one of those people, it's unfortunate, but I still like to pick them. I think they're fascinating and beautiful, and I still think they're delicious, although I can't really eat them anymore. So when you get these mushrooms home, do what's called a dry fry or a dry saute. Chop them up, put them in a hot pan, let them sweat out all of their moisture, and then you can add your lipid, which is your oil or your butter, and then saute them to a nice golden brown. You can replace any mushroom recipe with chanterelles. If you follow all of these keys, you have a good chance of identifying them. They're really common and they're probably growing in a forest near you. So make sure to get out there, make sure to hit subscribe. Jump over to mushroom-wonderland.com to get some merch or to check out my foraging tours that are gonna be coming up. I'm also teaching classes at the Olympic College in Bremerton, Washington, all about mushrooms and mycology. Go support me on Patreon if you'd like. Look up Mushroom Wonderland on Patreon. And until the next episode, much love everyone. Peace out.